Hey guys, what's up? This is CG Stuff. It's finally here. The Action Library 1.0 release is finally here. So I'm just going to begin by prefacing that why I started building this library. It's not going to take long. And if you want, you can just jump to the important part. Uh, so the reason why I started developing this library is because uh, I was working on a movie on a 55 minute feature solo, uh, mostly solo. Uh, I was in charge of the technical aspect and in Blender, uh, I was mostly doing all of the shots in Blender. And the idea is that there's a limitation to the work in Blender and I was facing a lot of constraint. And uh, the idea is that I wanted reusability. And while I was basically like working, I was mostly using like uh, the asset library and, and shots uh, inside the asset library. And I was mostly using appending. I was like saving a file. And if I wanted to an animation, I would like go inside that file. I would be appending this action and reusing it. And ultimately I wanted uh, a fast workflow. And when I was done, I was like, what if I would have an, an, uh, an app that was like studio library, like Maya, because like, oh, it's there. So why not have that? So I started doing some research, uh, you know, building my first repo, my second repo. And eventually I landed on the action library. Uh, which is great. So I wanted something that would complement Blender because uh, ultimately that would be the best workflow where you'd have like an external library where you would save everything. And if I were to save this animation on the fly, I can recall it in a different file. And uh, this is where we have basically. So this is basically it. Thank you for hearing me out. Let's just begin. So what you want to do is you want to go to this GitHub repo. I'm going to link it below in the description. Uh, you just more often than not, if you're not developing, you don't have to worry about any of this. Uh, if you're not a studio, if you're not a developer, uh, none of this matters to you because most of you, most of the animators are going to just go to release, just go here and download this uh, exe file, this zip file, basically. Once you download it, just extract it and we're gonna go here. This is basically the extract file. So you just launch it. And by default, you're gonna realize that there's already a storage file that comes with it. Automatically, once you hit next, this is the welcome wizard. You're gonna realize that it will automatically detect the the storage that's that's that comes with the with the with the action library. If you want, you can just like create uh, whatever. This storage file is basically uh, where your animations are going to live. All right, uh, remember that uh, directory uh, in a bit. So if you want, you can just like point to a different uh, storage uh, directory. But it's basically made to be portable in a way because if you move this you're going to have to point to it again and another database is going to be made and etc so once you basically start this application if you are let's say working as a solo artist if you will or a solo animator keep this where it is okay uh, for studio consideration like it's a different story but again most of you guys i'm assuming are going to be like uh, solo uh, uh, animators uh, so here's the thing so once it detects that file just like click next and it will just tell you like now you have to install the the the, the file the the blender add-on all right so once you're done uh, you will be greeted with this uh, application so in here in order to install the blender integration we need to go to this gear icon and this is the settings basically but before we do that, and it might seem silly, we're going to go to appearance and we want to change the theme that suits your style. Uh, for me, I just like this Maya classic setting. Uh, you have the Blender, the, the Houdini, the Studio, this monochromatic theme. And if you want to this Unreal Purple, if you guys want to like uh, have your custom setting, also you can like increase the icon uh, size. If you guys want to let, let's say, uh, like this blender orange, but want to customize and have more customizability, you can enter customized setting and you can start switching colors. Let's say, uh, I want this cyan for whatever reason, uh, uh, or like, let's say change the accent color, whatever doesn't make sense right now. Uh, you can, however, you can't actually save over the built-in setting. You have to save as name the theme, name uh, the author, which is you guys and save. Uh, but I'm not going to do that now. You can, you guys can play around with this. So I'm just going to cancel and I'm going to go back to the Maya classic. And, uh, you know, we're going to go here. Uh, we're going to have to first pick our Blender executable. All right. So right now I have my uh, Blender installation here. I'm just going to verify Blender. And uh, it, it just checks that it verified it. I'm going to install the add-on. And it's just telling me that uh, it installed the add-on. All right. It's as simple as that. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to hit OK. So here we have Blender launched. Okay. Uh, and you have the action library installed and uh, you need to go to uh, to your preferences 
over here, remember that storage location that we had earlier talked about? We're gonna go here and we're gonna go inside of it. I'm just gonna copy the directory. Okay, I'm gonna paste it here. This is very important. Okay, right now, moving forward, this is gonna be your directory where your animations are going to live. Okay, uh, don't worry about these things. This is gonna be the preview for the uh, for the for the animations and their uh, videos, the the thumbnails, etc. Down here, this is very important. If you're a developer and you're working on Python, uh, just choose the development and pick the 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 run.py. However, most likely than not, you're not going to have to worry about that. Just keep it at the production and pick the executable, the .exe. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to, again, go to this location, copy this. You're going to have to pick this file. So I'm going to drag this here and pick that the .exe. That, that's as simple as that. And with the test launch, when you test launch, the application launches. That's all you need to do. Simple as that. Now, what happens is I'm going to launch this uh, test file that I have. All right. Well, my file open basically in 5.0. Uh, I'm going to show you a few things. Now, in order to save animations, uh, I'm going to go here in this uh, action detail. Now, the first button, what it does basically, it just launches the application. Now, as, we see, as we've seen, uh, over here, you can configure it. You can just go instantly to preferences. Simple as that. Now, over here, it's telling you that I'm going to go to action editor. Like, I have this animation. It's the name. It's It has a slot. And uh, it's telling me that, you know, it has uh, 42 frames. Simple. Uh, I can add a description, I can add a tag, uh, not to be confused with the folder tags, uh, I'll, I'll, as we'll see later, uh, and the author. So I'm just going to put CG stuff, okay? And with this selected, uh, you don't have to actually put an end frame. So I'm going to actually increase the frame range. And right now I have 42 uh, frames on this animation, and I'm going to capture action, okay? So if we go back to the application, if we launch the application, I'm going to see that we have an animation and it's telling me that in the metadata panel, uh, the name of the action, 42 frames, the FPS, the duration, and a UUID. Again, don't worry about that because even if we recapture, I'm going to show you something. Even if we recapture the same exact animation, even if it has the same name, you're going to notice that two, two same animation names can exist. They have the same name, but they have a different ID. That's how it works basically, guys. Okay, it's as simple as that. I'm going to close this for a sec. Uh, right now, uh, what we can do other than that is that this, this uh, application is very metadata heavy. What does that mean? Let's say you want to uh, filter your, your rigs by, by name. Okay. Right now, we do know for a fact that this is a Mixamo rig, but it's telling me that it's detecting unknown. Okay. Not a big deal. I can override this and I can name this. Like, like if you do this, uh, it's going to tell you that rig type unknown. I can disable this and I'm going to say Mixamo, okay? Because I know for a fact that this is a Mixamo rig. It's as simple as that. So I'm going to capture the action. And if I'm going to launch the desktop app, okay, I'm going to refresh. I'm going to see over here that this is the rig type Mixamo. The previous one were just custom, okay? Uh, why is this important? It's because if I go to rig type, I'm going to see Mixamo and custom, okay? These are the filtering options, okay? So if I search for an animation of that same name, however, if I have the 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 rig type mixamo i'm going to see only one and this is very important later on if you guys have a, like a specific custom rig that you want to uh have you can like have the name over there uh and and uh you know like export it if it's an unreal rig it's going to detect it if it's a rigify rig it's going to detect it it's going to detect that you know the 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 specific rigs that are you know mainstream but it's not going to detect your own rig so you're going to have to name it important very important what about tags Tags are essentially folders or the ones that you export from Blender. Very different. So if I were to create a folder, let's call it one. Okay. I'm going to create another folder. Call it two, whatever. It can be idle. It can be running. doesn't matter. One of the things that you can do with folders, you can like drag a folder inside another folder. Okay. And I can drag this animation. Let's go back to all. I can drag this animation inside here. Okay. And other than the fact that I can filter this animation, it has over here a tag. The tag is number one. So over here, I can like refresh and I have tag number one. So I can filter by tag one and I can filter by, yeah. Okay. See, since Mixamo doesn't have a tag one, you're not going to see it, but you can already see how powerful this is. Okay. You can also filter by, let's see, go to all animations, remove the filter and filter by name. Doesn't make sense because they all have the same name, but you know, it's, it's, that's how powerful this is. You can also make it a favorite. So if I go to favorite, this is the only one that's going to appear. 
this is you can you can guys have fun all you want with the filtering system it's very powerful but i'm just going to show you something else this also have uh, has a tag one even though this is a subfolder of folder number one i can drag it to folder number two now it's going to have tag one and two okay very simple let's go back to blender uh it's going to close this close that i'm going to go back to blender i'm going to pick a different animation just uh, for for uh, preview purposes and over here i'm going to put let's say um i don't know idle comma uh run okay and these have nothing to do with folders okay uh even though it doesn't make sense i'm gonna capture this animation i'm gonna launch the application and i'm gonna refresh there's a block and over here it says idle and run yes these folders do not exist but the tags they do exist you know what i mean so you can make your own let's say ta tags your custom tags and you can filter by those okay very cool stuff so well what else can you do uh I want to, let's say, reapply these animations into Blender, okay? So what I can do, basically, is I'm going to go back to, let's say, a Blender uh, over here, okay? I'm just going to remove this animation. I'm just going to move everything, okay? Now this animation is, you know, it's in typos. So I'm just going to also remove it. And if I go back to the application, I want to apply the block. Over here, I have several options. Uh, I, I previously, if you guys were following me, I had these options in Blender, but you know what? It made more sense to add them here. So I'm going to apply a new action and be careful of the mirroring. Okay, I'm just going to explain these options. First of all, obviously this button applies the action to Blender, but we have them with options. This mirroring has to be, has to respect the naming conventions of Bones and Blender. So, you know, underscore L underscore R. Uh, uh, R. Uh, this rig does not respect that naming convention. So if you actually do it, the, it's going to break your rig. Uh, it works on Rigify. It works on a custom rig where you guys have the naming convention uh, respected. So let's say if I go into this rig, this has uh, left leg, left up leg. It has right up leg. It's not going to work because, you know, uh, in Blender, it has to be underscore R underscore L. It's as simple as that. So we're going to ignore that for now. If I, let's say, reverse animation, and I'll show you in a bit what it does, it's going to actually literally reverse the animation. Uh, you can do it on selected bones. You can use it. Uh, that, you know, you can. You guys can ignore that one, but, you know, it's basically I'm preparing for the layering system. But what it just does is it just creates it in a new slot. I'll show it in a bit. Right now, let's just do it vanilla. So if I do apply action to Blender, uh, I'm just going to here uh, do manual apply. Uh, and, you know, it's as simple as that. It just like created the this this blocking animation for us okay so let's say i want to continue and i want to make basically the second animation that we applied uh this one here's the thing instead of making a new action i can just insert at playhead so i make sure that the playhead is over here and over here i apply and i do manual uh apply again okay so you can see that he was blocking and then he's he's basically kicking okay very simple all right now in blender i already captured this animation which you can preview here, by the way, and you can like do it for any animation. Now, the reason why previously, if you've seen my videos, you can see that if you hover, you can preview the uh, the actions here. Uh, now, for performance reasons, I chose to uh, just do it here in this big window. So again, uh, we're going to look at this uh, this action, basically. This action, basically, if you see, uh, he's just standing. He's like from going from crushing to standing. Now, the second toggle basically reverses this animation. So what we're going to do, we're going to just click new action. We're going to apply this action to Blender. Now, right now, it's securing. Uh, this character is in T-Pose, so I'm just going to manually apply. And you can see that he's not crouching. He's standing, then crouching. We just essentially reverse the animation. Uh, that's what the toggle does. So we're going to go back to T-Pose. And over here, we have the toggle that does it on selected bones. So I'm just going to select this set of bones. And in the action, basically, we're going to choose selected bones only. So again, I'm going to apply the action again. And over here, uh, since we already have this set of bones, it's only going to affect only these bones. So I'm going to apply, and you can see that this is only affecting these set of bones. Uh, very cool stuff. So uh, that's pretty much it. Here's the thing. Uh, we have this one last uh, toggle. Uh, pretty much right now, it's just experimental, and I'm doing it for future proofing, because in the future, we're going to add the, the Blender foundations are going to add uh, animation layers. Uh, what this does is that it adds the animation on another slot, in the sense that if you see here, Right now, I'm going to just like add any animation. Uh, for instance, this one doesn't really matter. Uh, why am I doing this is because an action must already exist. It won't work if you don't already have an action. Like you can add an action. You can already have an action. doesn't really matter. And it has a, it needs to have a slot. Okay. Uh, now, right now, it just says make some a slot. Now, 
if you go back to the application let's say i want to add this one as a as a separate slot and apply it okay and i go back to blender okay and and i uh let's say if i go here and i manual apply the same act uh, the same action is there however it applied the action that i wanted as a separate slot so technically both of them are there but that last one is a slot whether you want to use it or not is up to you guys but the idea is that i'm only adding it just to future proof the whole uh, you know the whole thing basically and that's pretty much the whole thing uh it's very simple and uh it's very cool now let's go into more detailed stuff like like for instance uh, deletion and, and stuff now i know for a fact that in productions and even as solo creators you don't like to delete stuff and obviously it's not really industry standard there's very specific stuff when it comes to deletion what you guys can do basically is uh before we go into deletion there's this toggle menu which is associated with deletion if i go into this edit menu i can select multiple with shift basically i can select multiple animations and i can choose to remove tags basically right now they don't have tags but let me just like uh, put them in some folders basically okay whatever okay so if I go to all animation and let's say select these these two, I, I get to remove these tags. Uh, it just tells me like right now they only have the new folder tag. So I get to say okay and like remove folder. Uh, it's telling me like, do you want to remove the tag new folder from these two animations? So I'm like, yes. And right now they don't have any tags anymore. Uh, that's what it does basically. Uh, you can also like choose to uh, move several animations into folders. Right now we have only two and new folder. So I'm gonna, you know, uh, move them to two. Uh, so right now, if I go back, I can see that all of them have been moved to the tag 2 or the new folder 2. Uh, that's pretty much it. So uh, the idea is that you can do that. One more thing you can do is you can change the gradient. So if I, let's say, select all of these, I can, let's say, select the gradient attack. Uh, I can select these. I can select, you know, the gradient dance. I just change the background color. Very simple stuff. I'm just going to keep them idle right now. Uh, the default one. Uh, one more thing. Let's say you want to delete something. Uh, I don't want the delete to be something taken lightly because in studios they don't usually delete an animation they archive it or they keep it uh, you know as a last 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 resort because usually you would learn from an old animation so what i did is uh, it's a two-step process first of all you take your animation let's say i want to take these two uh and then you come to this button this is the archive button you click on it and it's going to ask you are you sure you want to archive your your animation i'm like okay and now you would see that your your these two animations have moved to the archive folder and then if you go back and if you click on the archive again it's gonna go back to the trash even then they're still not permanently deleted they're still in the trash and if i click on them uh if i want to let's say empty the trash it's gonna tell me no you're not allowed to permanently delete it because you have to go to settings and allow permanent deletion here's the thing you don't want to do this lightly because in big production and in studios you you have you still have the ability to restore you know what i mean uh this is just there to to make sure that oh you want to archive something you want to delete something because usually leads are the only ones who are allowed to delete something however this option is is still there for you guys okay uh anyway in order to restore these uh, animations basically you need to go to trash uh you click in edit mode basically you click on both of them you restore to archives they go back to archives now let's say you want to select either or basically you also can uh, also you are able to restore to library you click this one you restore to library and all of your animations are restored it's very simple uh now generally this is pretty much it there is one more thing i want to talk about now see i just like uh colored a few uh of these uh animation cards i basically added a few tags over here like you can see that uh, there's like these tags uh, a few of them are favorited etc now let's say you have a vast animation library and you want to like export it as a backup you know what i mean like something happens which you uh you know whatever it is uh what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you something over here in the settings there's something called backup you can export a library as a as a dot anim.lib file okay so i'm gonna export it right now okay so i exported my library at the file okay just, just for testing what I'm going to do now is I'm going to delete my entire library. Just give me a sec. Okay, and I'm back. And now you can see that I have no folders. I have no animation cards. I have nothing. Everything is gone. So if I go back to backup, I import my library. Okay, and now it's going to ask me like, uh, this archive contains five animation and the total is, you know, 2.9 megabytes. And it's been created at this, this date, basically. I'm going to say yes. And I'm going to hit okay. And I'm going to hit refresh. You can see that my folders are back. My, my animation cards are back with their state. What is favorite? Uh, their tags etc if you want to format or whatever 
basically, I hope you guys enjoy this uh, application. And I think it's a great compliment to Blender because I really enjoy uh, animating in Blender and I hope you guys enjoy it as much as I enjoyed making it. Uh, all right, guys, have a great day.